Check, please. Oil has reached a seven-year high. This is pretty incredible. There's war in the Ukraine. Could be sanctions. EV companies are, are doing well. There's a lot of if, ands, and what's about oil. And we're here to guide you and give you a thought process about investing in potential companies like BP, Marathon, USO. Let's get after it. We're going to talk oil. Paul, give me your thoughts. So oil is interesting. Remember just less than two years ago, we all bought USO. Yeah. Because oil had gone negative. Now, basically USO is calculations on futures, prices, blah, 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 blah. I don't know the exact thing. And guess what? I sold too quickly. I didn't understand it. It fell and we should have kept it because now it'd be up four times, something like that. Oil is really exaggerated right now because this whole Russia, Ukraine situation going on, right? Yeah. Oil is a commodity. If there is a threat to stopping production or a threat to the supply, what's going to happen to the price? It's going to go up a lot. Remember in 08, we had $140 a barrel of oil. So from 08 to 2020, we went from $140 a barrel to negative. And now we're back at 100, what is it? Today it was up like 10%. 110, 100, 105, 105, something, something like that. that. So it is February, it's March 1st today. By the way, shout out to my, uh, my cousin Yusuf, it's his birthday. But he has February 29th birthday. So I have to give him the uh, happy birthday on March 1st. Every four years. Um, so oil is, oil's up high. I don't, per, so I look at this world and say, are we going to always need oil? I think in some capacity we will, but our reliance oil is going down. Now, remember back in the seventies, your parents probably had cars that got like seven miles, six miles to the gallon. Paul, I own a 72 Cadillac. What does it get per mile? I, it's like, it is seven miles a gallon. Is it even that high? I have to put like, like it holds like 28 gallons of gas in the trunk. It smells like it too. Yeah. It's in your, it's in your garage, Mo. Yeah. I got to get that out of here when spring hits. Go ahead, Paul. Now I have a big SUV and I get 24 and a half miles per gallon. So over time, cars have become more and more efficient. Now we're also transitioning to EV. Mm -hmm. So what's going to happen to electricity prices? My guess is they're going to go up. And oil prices, I don't know where they're going to go. The hard part about oil for me is, I'd, oil. if I own a barrel of oil right here, if I had a barrel of oil right here, how does it give me money every year? Cash flow, you mean? Yeah, how does it give me cash flow? Um, if you stare at it longer, it might. Yeah, I don't, that's the thing. I don't, I don't know how it gives me cash. I like to analyze things that have cash flow. Now, with that said, gold doesn't have cash flow. I was just going to bring that up. You're, you're in gold deep, baby. I'm not in gold. I'm in gold miners. You're right. Because I've seen that gold miners have been hurt a lot because gold prices fell, blah, blah, blah. Now they're back up again. I don't think gold miners have followed. Same thing with oil. Maybe you should be looking at BP. Now, my personal opinion is BP, ConocoPhillips, Exxon, Mobil, all these ones, they're, up, they're probably doing well because oil is up a lot. Is that sustainable? I don't know. I personally like to invest in commodities businesses when the commodity is having some big secular shifts down. Oil right now at 107 is near all-time highs by 30% from all-time highs. That's not really seeming very secularly low at that point. Do you know what I mean? Now, this is my way of doing it. Now, there's other ways of doing it with momentum that's totally different though. I'm looking at company. Look, look at BP. What's BP at? 30 look, bucks. Yeah, let's look. Oh, is it really? That's it? It got it. petroleum. Let's pull it up on our eight pillar software. Holy cow, $28. There you go, 28. But it got as high last week as 34, 15, 16. Something. And by the way, look when oil was $140 a barrel. Yep. The company was at 80 bucks. That was 14 years ago. 14 years ago, guys. Our friend Warren Buffett made a big investment in oil right here. Uh -oh. The company he even says, he's like, yeah, I didn't think oil prices were going to collapse the way they did. And they did. I just don't like these sort of things. These things are like, it's hard for me. I like steady and consistent revenue and profit. Let's look at their income statement over the last 15 years. I mean, look at this. In 2012, they did $375 billion in revenue. Last year, they did $157 billion in revenue. <laughs> I mean, it's down in less than half. Profit. But they, they did 11 billion when they did 375, and now they did 7. Point, it's just all over the board. If these value investing concepts speak to you, 
You can join the Everything Money community. You can get the software behind Paul and you can have all this in the palm of your hands. By joining the community, you'll be joining thousands of people all over the world who speak and communicate just like you on these topics. We help each other, we work together, we day trade, it's incredible. You get the software, you get the data, and all the amazing tools that are coming out in the future. Go to everythingmoney.com or patreon.com slash everythingmoney and join today. My personal opinion on oil stocks is I'm not buying them right now because it's hard for me to understand them. And if I were to buy them though, it'd be buying them when there is long-term secular, I hate oil. You know, oil went to negative two years ago but it was quick and boop rebounded because we hit this. It was COVID mm-hmm. and everybody's like, the world's going to shut down. We don't need oil anymore. Negative I mean, $38 a barrel or something. It was something crazy. I don't remember what it was, but the whole point is from my personal perspective, and this is my way of doing it. It doesn't mean it's the right way to do it, but I do believe in investing in the way that makes sense to you. And what makes sense to me is avoiding oil companies because of I don't understand how the cash flow works. Does that mean that you're not going to make money off them? Oh, absolutely not. You can make money off oil. Absolutely you can. But just go understand how they do long run, like what drives them in the long run. And it's going to be oil prices. So understand where oil prices become more of an understanding of oil prices. I don't have that understanding. And as much as that sounds boring and what the heck, Paul, I want you to look at this video and say, geez, okay, this guy does a lot and has a lot and is smart and he chooses not to do something because he doesn't understand it. That's why you need to look at it. Yeah, oil, not everything's been understood. Oil, so it, it's very, it's commodity based, it's political based, it's OPEC based, it's 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 everywhere. Everything is everything is. And then you're trying to put a value on it. It's not just numbers. It's just so geopolitical. It's hard to wrap your mind around and say, yes, I truly understand this. Now there are people out there who can do it well, of course, but I'm not that person. And to me, I'd rather buy a company that sells widgets than that that they that they, that they just go out there and try to advertise and market, and that's what works for me. Fidget spinners or widgets? I do like the fidget spinners, though. Have you ever seen those? Those things are fun. Oh, yeah, they are. Don used to have those in his desk. and come to his office and always play with it. So now one of the great things is, guys, we have this chat community here for our software. We have a commodities section completely. And this is what's so great about having five, 6,000 people in there talking. They can sit there and talk. Somebody in there understands commodities. That's not me. There are tons of people in there that, who know way more about a lot of things than I do. That's the point of that community. I selfishly use it to get people's ideas and go, oh, that makes sense. That doesn't make sense to me. That does make sense to me, but that's the whole point of all of this. Guys, you'll notice with BP to trade this, we, this, is, this is definitely a 50% stock. So you, that's why you're struggling right now with the exception of that little blip. And it took all of this that is going on in the world to create this little blip right here. And you've, you've, you've pulled right back down past that 50% now. Now, the good news is when it comes to a long-term chart on BP, you get really nice long trends going through the sweet spot here. So let's zoom in and just show you what you can do. Right now, we've we've bounced off that resistance point of the 50%, and it looks like we're about to roll down and come down through the sweet spot as a short. This might be a perfect opportunity to short and come down here to this $27 area. This could be a really good opportunity to short, and following that, maybe to ride it right back up to that area of, say, $30, whatever the resistance point is. Make money both ways. This is a great stock for that. So guys, I cannot stress this enough when it comes to any type of investing. Do what I do, what Warren Buffett, what every successful investor does. Invest in what you understand. If you work in the oil and gas industry or you work in commodities and understand how these prices move, by all means, this is the kind of stuff to look at. If you don't, don't do it. But the great news is, even from our perspective, I can still look at these companies and see a cash flow. And when I say that, when I say that inconsistent cash flow, I know it's not for me at that point. But that's fine. It might be for somebody else. I'm not saying it's a good or bad investment. And you shouldn't say anything is a good or bad investment if you don't feel like you understand it. But somebody out there watching this video goes, yeah, I get this. More power to you. Go invest in it. Give me a call and teach it to me because I'd love to know. Yeah, I was going to say, we had our interview with uh, Monish Pabrai, and he, he sort of said what Warren Buffett says is there's this sphere of understanding about what you can invest in. And even if, you, if you're wondering you're close to the edge of the sphere – you're not in, right? It's, yeah. like, it's yeah. like you're either in or you're not. And so this might be another one, obviously, for me, since you know so much more. But yeah, if you feel alone out there, join the community. There are definitely people talking about this. You can get a better understanding. That's our take on BP, on Marathon, all these oil companies, USO. Uh, we'll keep you updated. We'll see where this goes. It's crazy out there. So um, good luck. And you can certainly trade this. We'll see you next video. Thanks for watching.